Live from beautiful Las Vegas, it's time for the West Coast Conference Women's Championship inside of Orleans Arena. It's the 16th ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs and the BYU Cougars, the fourth time these two teams have met for the championship. Let's take a look at the bracket, but more importantly, as the number one and two seeds have advanced, we've been provided some unfortunate news regarding Gonzaga, the regular season champions. Half a dozen players, along with some staff members and managers, have been struck with gastroenteritis yesterday. A couple, most notably Jill Townsend, the WCC Player of the Year last season and Gonzaga's leading scorer, and Sierra Walker, will be able to play, most likely not, in the starting lineup. Thanks for joining us. I'm Paul Sunderland here in Southern California and out in Atlanta is former Tennessee point guard Andrea Carter. And Andrea, obviously unfortunate news for Gonzaga, but this has been a very, very competitive league all season long. Gonzaga's in the tournament no matter what, but this has been a tough, tough way to advance. Well, that's why this game is so exciting. We've got the number one and the number two seeds in the league. And really, Gonzaga has a solid spot in the tournament. But if BYU wins today, they're going to be in. So it's going to be competitive. They split during the regular season. The games were decided by less than 10 points. So it should be a battle today. Well, we talked about Jill Townsend, who may not be in the starting lineup. She was last year's West Coast Conference Player of the Year. The two current reigning, their co Grown representing BYU, the rather representing Gonzaga. They will be in the game as well as we get to that. But you think it's a different matchup that could really decide this championship? Absolutely. I've got my eyes on BYU. Paisley Harding, she is a shooter. She's a slasher. She had 23 points yesterday, season high, seven rebounds and four assists for San Francisco. And then on the other side, Jill Townsend. You know, she's not going to be in the starting lineup battling that gastroenteritis, but just watch out. If she's able to compete, she moves with power. She is very strong, active on the defensive end. She had a double-double yesterday, 14 points, 10 rebounds, and 4 assists. Gonzaga at 22-3 and three overall, 16-1, and one, the regular season champions, and we're underway. Gonzaga will be wearing their home white uniforms as the top seed BYU, 18-4 and four overall. 13 and 3 in West Coast Conference play and as you mentioned two very very tight games played between BYU and Gonzaga during the regular season each team winning on their home floor respectively Albiero out of Brazil Shaley Gonzalez one of the two co-players of the year you talked about uh, Paisley Harding as well the other player of the year is Jen Worth her twin sister is one of the players who we did not see out on the floor wearing number four Leanne Worth her twin sister there is uh, Jen Worth, six foot three senior out of Mesa, Arizona, 13 points and eight rebounds per game. Starting lineup, Kaylee and uh, the Trung sisters in the backcourt, Abby O'Connor, there is Jen Worth and Melody Kempton will move into the starting lineup, the six one junior out of Post Falls, Idaho. Right off the bat, though, I like Melody Kempton, her activeness and activity on the glass, going for that offensive rebound. That's something that they will miss with Jill Townsend on the bench, her rebounding presence. Hampson down inside at six foot seven, towering above uh, Jen Worth, who comes in at only six foot three. Hampson, an expert shot blocker. Down along the baseline, not there, and Trung will take the rebound. Andrea, what are you looking for early, particularly from Gonzaga? They've not only had to deal with the illness, but also the disruption. Are you looking for them to settle into this game? Definitely settle in and just the offensive execution. You want to get ball reversals. You want to set your screens, make hard cuts. They don't need to settle for jump shots. They need to get the shot that they're looking for, not the shot that BYU wants them to take. There's Jeff Judkins in his 20th season in Provo five times the WCC Coach of the Year, including this year, nine NCAA tournament appearances, along with a couple of Sweet 16s. First personal foul was called on Sarah Hampson as Jen Worth tried to take her off the dribble.
Another BYU whistle away from the job. play. They're doing a good job, BYU, at guarding that pick and roll action with Jen Worth. Sometimes she'll roll, sometimes she'll slip, sometimes she'll pop. You've got to be able to know where she is after she sets those screens because she scores off of those actions. Kempton cut off inside, Trong around the high screen from Worth. Picked up by Hampson as she rolls in the lane and now the shot clock being counted down. Kempton looking inside and BYU comes away with a steal from Sarah Hampson inside. Both teams may be showing a little bit of nerves. Worth ahead of the pack. Nice pass, giving it up. Kempton with the basket. I love the push in transition from Gonzaga. That's where Coach Lisa Fortier said they might have an advantage in the transition game scoring early. And great decision by Jen Worth. Well, when we talked to Coach Fortier yesterday, she did not want to play against a set defense, particularly with the aforementioned six foot seven Hampson down in the lane. Hampson blocked nine shots in a game earlier this year against Pepperdine. I would not want to face that in the lane all afternoon long in Las Vegas. But even on that last possession, you know, the ball gets kicked out of bounds, but Jen Worth is down the floor. She is running. If you can get that ball to her and she can reach and lay it in with Hampson behind her, that's a great play. BYU's had a couple of good looks right at the rim, but getting off to a cold start at 0 for 5. They were white hot yesterday in a 30-point victory over USF. Nice sharing of the ball, but still off the iron, and that's going to be a blocking foul inside the restricted area. And the first team foul going up against Lisa Fortier's Gonzaga Bulldogs, now in her seventh year, 28-3, ranked as high last year as 11 in the AP, 17-1 and in the WCC, four times to the NCAA tournament, would have hosted last year, which would have had Spokane on its ears once again up in the kennel. And this year, as everybody knows, Gonzaga currently ranks 16th, so they are solidly into the field. Uh, the NCAA Women's Championship will be held in the San Antonio area in a bubble. Both free throws up and good. And there are so many teams last season, Paul, that missed opportunities to host, maybe for the first time, and that would have been amazing for Gonzaga. I know you can't hold on to the past, but I've played in Washington against Gonzaga, and it was one of the toughest environments to play in. An example of what Hampson can do down inside, not only changing shots, but flat out rejecting shots. Dangerous pass, bobbled and dropped out of bounds. Let's take a look at the impact that Sarah Hampson can have on the game, the six foot seven senior out of Linden, Utah. I know she's got the size and the length, but blocking shots is also timing. It's a skill. It's not something that you just do all the time because you have the size. She has the hand placement and the timing to block those shots. And it's also a family affair. More on that as the game goes along. Worth off the side of the iron, offensive rebound. I was going to say reset, but a quick shot put up and nice rebound taken by Lauren Gustin wearing number 12 in dark blue. Off the side of the iron, and the cold shooting continues for BYU. With both teams struggling, Paul, there's going to be an emphasis on the shots that you take. Good shots. So right here, offensive possession strong for Gonzaga. Get a ball reversal. Now you've got an inside touch, but we've got to finish. Worth ran out of real estate. That ball up into the bottom of the iron, but it will be. Gonzaga basketball, 20 to shoot. Coming into the game for the first time, Yvonne Ejim, who played sparingly yesterday, the 6-1 freshman out of Calgary, Canada. But if you're just joining us, again to reiterate, gastroenteritis has hit the Gonzaga Bulldogs, the regular season WCC champion, six players and some staff members along with an assistant coach struck yesterday. A couple had improved enough to join the team for the game, most notably Jill Townsend, last year's WCC player of the year, along with Sierra Walker, the 5'8 graduate senior out of uh, Oregon City, but a transfer we're very familiar with. She played three years at Vanderbilt. Kempton around the corner, lays it up and in. Nice take. I love the energy by Melody Kempton. Even when she plays little minutes, she's going to get a lot of minutes here with, you know, the sickness going on in Gonzaga's team, but she is always efficient and always works really hard. 
sixth woman of the year in the WCC and a nice response at the other end. Shaley Gonzalez, 5'10", sophomore out of Gilbert, Arizona. As mentioned, co-player of the year along with Jen Worth, averages 18 points per game. Townsend is on the floor for the first time. They're on the right wing above the three-point line. And that jump shot is missed. Kaylee Trung, five foot nine sophomore, along with her sister Kayleen Trung, both out of Houston, Texas. So two twins on this Gonzaga roster, a play-by-play -play announcer's dream. All we would need is triplets. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the right. Worth sisters, the, the Trung sisters, making my life very, very easy indeed, enjoying calling this championship. Paisley Harding off the side of the iron. Again, had 23.7 rebounds yesterday, and it'll be Gonzaga basketball. Just underway for the WCC Championship and the automatic bid into the NCAAs here in Las Vegas. On the first team to enter the NCAA tournament. Perez will keep it and take it and hit it with 2.1 to go. And the stand for Cardinal with the trophy. South Carolina owns the SEC tournament. Back with Andrea Carter, formerly of the University of Tennessee. I'm Paul Sunderland. Dre, you know a little something about the SEC tournament. Already had a lot of excitement around the country. You can see the tickets punched already. 22 on the men's side, 23 on the women's side. Been interesting indeed. As we've mentioned, and Gonzaga with the strength of their resume, ranked at number 16. They're in the field, according to Charlie Cream, our bracketologist on the women's side. They're a five seed. We spoke to him just moments ago. He said BYU, even with a loss, has a sliver a sliver of an opportunity to get into the field of 64. He said, I recommend that BYU wins the game. I think that's pretty good advice. Yeah, obviously, you know, BYU, they want that automatic qualifier to get in the tournament and have their spot secured on Selection Monday. That has to be one of the most stressful things if you don't know you're going to be in the tournament. That Selection Show, they want to put themselves in position to know where they're going to be. Well, and really unfortunate again for Gonzaga. And of course, BYU would never want anything to happen to a competitor with regard to the illness. But this is a real opportunity for BYU. But they have to take advantage of it. Jeff Judkin certainly aware. Uh, he would have been aware when he saw a team he's very familiar with in Gonzaga come out to warm up. And some notables, Leanne Worth, Jill Townsend was slow to get on the floor. So he knows that something is up. Maybe not specifically, but certainly something has befallen Gonzaga, and we wish them a speedy recovery. There is Jill Townsend, averaging 14 points, five rebounds, player of the year last year, first team all WCC this year. And a big loss for the Bulldogs. Even so far, I love how active Jill Townsend's been in the huddles and on the bench. You know, for BYU, Charlie Cream still said they look like a five seed with a win, no worse than a six seed with the loss. But either way, they want to win this tournament. They have had a lot of ups and downs in the WCC tournament the past few years. They want this, especially the seniors. Ball is lost on the inbound play. Trung coming out of the backcourt, takes it coast to coast and lays it up and in. Talking about Gonzaga, they've won this tournament eight different times going back all the way to 2007 and most recently back to back in 2017 and 18. BYU joined the WCC for the 2011 and 12 season and they've won the championship on three occasions. So a couple of very, very strong programs and speaking of that, nice strong take right down the lane. Tegan Graham, six-foot graduate student, out a transfer from Colgate with the basket. Boy, good deep catch. Wow, how do you get it that deep? Jen Worth been doing that all season long. Good spacing. Spacing, and I absolutely love the dribble into the post feed. Look, get the angle. That's what you have to do, and fire in that bounce pass. Great seal, owning the paint by Jen Worth, and then a very nice quick turn. You see how she turned before the double team could get there? That's what you have to do in the post, make a quick decision.
Both of these teams have tested themselves against the country's best. Gonzaga dropping an early non-conference matchup against SEC regular season, excuse me, tournament champions, Texas A&M. Good luck down inside in response from Hampson. Gonzaga was right there with uh, South Carolina all game long, lost by seven, and BYU took out LSU, as we know. Also very much a bubble team in the SEC, but LSU is a very tough out. Nice steal by BYU. Kick ahead, down in deep. Gonzalez has that shot rejected. Gonzalez, notice, wearing the heavy knee brace, unable to play last year because of an ACL injury, and then aggravated it on February 2nd. Still probably not quite 100%. Strong around a couple of screens, and Hampson just swats that ball out of bounds. Mentioned that it was it a family affair. Mother Teresa leads BYU all-time with 494 rejections and her older sister Jen was an All-American in both basketball and volleyball for BYU. It is going to be tough to get finishes in the paint. If you're a guard for Gonzaga, it might have to be a one dribble pull up, a floater in the lane with Hampson inside. Little pick and pop off, that's a rebound battled for by Townsend. Hampson comes away and that is just ripped away. Dribbled out of traffic, Trunk thought about resetting and will. That play right there is Jill Townsend in a nutshell. She is so tough and so gritty. Yeah, that's an illegal screen, no question. Number 33 in white, Kempton was late coming out. We have to take another look at just the effort that it takes. It takes such a great effort to rebound with Hampson on the inside. Jill Townsend just rips it away. High screen and roll, and that ball deflected away. Nice rotation defensively by Kaylee Trung. Ball ruled off the hand of Tegan Graham and off the turnover. Little big Gonzaga basketball tied at eight. 120 remaining in the opening quarter. As you might imagine, tied at eight. The shooting percentage, not what either team would like. Four of 13 for Gonzaga, three of 12 for BYU. Worth working on Hampson and has that shot rejected. How many block shots already for Sarah Hampson? Oh, but she went down awkwardly. Was focusing on the rejection and Sarah Hampson has gone down holding that left ankle. We definitely hope Hampson is okay. She's already made her presence felt in this game so far. Drea, three block shots. We haven't even played a quarter. She averages 2.6 per game. Block shots, but also altering shots. Even if she doesn't get a block, just her presence and her length makes you change your shot. Yep, she came down on Jenworth's foot. The most common basketball injury and walking very, very gingerly on that left ankle. We'll hope that certainly she can return. A big, big factor, and now some decisions have to be made by Jeff Judkins. And remember when we spoke with Lisa Fortier yesterday on Zoom, the Gonzaga head coach, she said, what will we do when Hampson goes to the sideline. Well, let's keep track. A minute and five remaining in the quarter, tied at eight. We'll see what happens over the next several minutes and hope, of course, that Hampson can return. And already you see Jill Townsend posting up down low. They're going to look to take advantage inside down low with Hampson on the bench. Fortier thought it was really important in this game that when Hampson did go to the sideline, that they were able to take advantage. Nice pass. I got to make that shot on the offensive rebound. Not there. Trung number 11 with it. See the seals down low. Look, going inside again. It's going to be a traveling violation called on Kempton. Gonzaga, 72-62 winner 
over Santa Clara in the semifinal yesterday, and that was a real battle. Santa Clara just would not go away. What a turnaround, though, for BYU. They lost their last regular season game to San Francisco by 14, came out in the semifinals yesterday, and beat the Dons by 30, a 44-point turnaround. Gonzalez on the nice give and go. Great cut, great pass, leading her to the basket. Gonzalez averaging 18 points, fourth best in the conference as time winds down. And Shaley Gonzalez going to have to try to pick things up at the offensive end with some help as well. Sarah Hampson on the sideline and after one, BYU leading it 10-8 to for the West Coast Conference Championship. There's a saying, move as a team, never move alone. Together we struggled. Together we persevere. Now we're here. For the first time, two black women are playing for an SEC championship. United now, we win. win. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SOPA. Get your money right. The strip in Las Vegas, hopefully coming back to life day by day. Well, and one thing that I wanted to point out, I mentioned uh, a couple of times because it was the headline that several players on the Gonzaga squad had been struck officially with gastroenteritis and the officials with Gonzaga in the WCC tournament. This is not COVID related in any way, shape or form. We wish the players a speedy and quick and full recovery. Paisley Harding got her feet set, squares, and knocks down a jumper, and maybe that'll take the lid off. BYU now 5 of 16. Drea on the other side, Gonzaga only 4 of 16, and these are two very efficient teams. And, and something to think about with Hampson on the bench, and we absolutely hope that she is able to return, but for Gonzaga now, get more efficient shots, get into the paint, get easier buckets, really work to get those layups because her long presence and her shot blocking ability is no longer a factor. We hear it all the time. Don't settle for a good shot, get a great shot. And speaking of efficiency, these are the two top shooting teams in the conference. Gonzaga number one at 47% and just behind is BYU at 45 and a couple of big baskets this by laura gustin the 6-1 sophomore out of salem utah the number one rebounder in the conference at just under 13 per game i love lauren gustin's game she's so gritty she's really strong and she's working to extend her range that pick and pop action she utilizes it spin move down inside good rotation defensively really good work without hampson on the floor and it forces a turnover and should point out for Gonzaga, Sierra Walker, the three-point specialist, the lefty for the Bulldogs on the floor for the first time. She's really struggled with the illness. Look at the double and the block from Tegan Graham coming in, picking up what's lost with Hampson on the bench. Seven turnovers now for Gonzaga. That has been a big factor. Are you surprised by that? This is really a solid basketball team. I am surprised, but with Missing those key players in the starting lineup and dealing with what they're dealing with. Some players may be getting a little bit more time than they're used to, especially early in the game. That could be a factor. BYU staying with it, but the shot clock winding down, and that did not draw iron, so it'll be a shot clock violation. That's a good sign for Gonzaga. That was something that Coach Fortier talked to us about, Paul, knowing your defensive assignments, knowing the scouting report. Who do you want to be out on? Who do you want taking those shots? Shot clock violations were always something that gave me energy. It was a little bit mo of momentum when you took a team and didn't let them even hit the rim. And Coach Fortier said if Paisley Harding is taking an open three-point shot, we have done something very wrong. Here is Walker out of the corner looking for her first basket. And Walker was one of the players who was uh, taken ill yesterday, but she was able to recover sufficiently to at least come to the game. Walker, the 5'8 redshirt senior out of Oregon City. We talked about her before, a transfer from Vanderbilt. Did not play last year, averaged nine points per game during her three years in Nashville for the Commodores. And I like that shot that she took. She's a sniper, that's what she's known for. They made the extra pass, that's a great shot. Worth just picked up a personal, maybe a little bit frustrated, going over the top. Jen Worth 
the reigning co-player of the year in the WCC now just one of seven so far from the floor as she picks up her first personal and will head to the sideline. So far we have not seen her twin sister who is usually in the starting lineup, averages nine points and six rebounds. Gonzalez right down the lane, missed that at close range. Boy, nice defense and another turnover. Townsend gave it up after the good stop one-on-one -on -one by BYU. Solid defensive possessions in a row from Tegan Graham. Dangerous pass into the cross court, but a break for the Cougars. Again at 18 and four on the year, 13 and three in the West Coast Conference. Lost to USF uh, February 27th, the last game of the regular season also to the San Diego Toreros. And as we mentioned, split the season series with the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Only loss for Gonzaga was in Provo to BYU. You can tell the shot clock is winding down. Nice back cut. Eh, not going to get it off. And another shot clock violation. Both teams struggling right now. Or is it really solid game plan defense? I like the defensive energy. I'm going to blame the defense. I'm not going to say it's, it's poor offense. I'm going to say it's great defense. I'm going to give these teams a little benefit of the doubt. I like that defensive possession. Well, and they They're know denying. one another. Yeah, you, you know me, Paul. Well, I know, I know you, and I also know that these two teams know one another exceptionally well. They know everything about each other. Devon Ejim with the offensive rebound, number 15, not able to put that back up and in. Sarah Hampson, the shot-blocking specialist, left the game with 105 left in the opening quarter with an injured ankle. We have not seen her since, and Gonzaga has not scored since she went to the sideline. Step back out of the corner. Knocking that down. The Great jumper shot. by Graham out of the corner. She's giving them a little bit of a lift offensively. Offensively, defensively, she's really come in and made the most of her time. Love her energy, love her defense, and a smooth three-point jump shot. Well, BYU is really digging in at the defensive end. Double team, Trong nowhere to go. Tried to throw it out to her sister. Ejim on the step back jumper. And that's going to be a shot clock violation. Wow, we had two at the BYU end, and now it was Gonzaga's turn. Love the Look at the little screen. You see the screen that was set by Lauren Gustin just to give Graham enough time to get that shot off. Something that Graham. might go unnoticed, but that's a big deal. Graham now has five to lead the way in a very low-scoring affair, particularly if you're Gonzaga. Gonzaga averages 73 points per game, number one in the West Coast Conference. Good footwork, missed it point blank and puts it back up and in. This is where if you're Gonzaga, you have to finish on the inside, stay focused, things feel a little hectic, they feel a little helter-skelter. You got to take care of the basketball. Yeah, Gustin missing first at point blank range, but staying with it. Harding down the lane. Nice little drop pass tipped away out of the hands of Gustin. And we will step aside. Boy. Frustrating start for Gonzaga, but give BYU all the credit. Just playing some smothering defense. Here we go. You were as good as these guys. You'd be having that much fun, too. I'm excited we got hoops. I've got a goosebumps. <laughs> Turn away. Reaching to the moon to stop that through. Goes okay. to the bucket and thunders it down. Welcome to the big time. And the ACC tournament starts today. Pittsburgh lost to Miami. Look at Duke. Andrea seated number 10. Have they ever played on day one of the ACC tournament? Well, they are today against Boston College. And then you look out 
Leonard Hamilton's Florida State Seminoles, along with the Virginia Cavaliers, probably two of the favorites. That, based on <laughs> being the number one and two seeds, going to be a very, very interesting tournament. And what about the sixth seed, North Carolina? Will they be able to get in? I think if they win a couple of games, they'll get into the field of 68 on the men's side. Back with former Tennessee Lady Vol point guard Andrea Carter in Atlanta. I'm Paul Sunderland in Southern California. And how surprised are we all by what has happened to Gonzaga? First the illness, but now just the inefficiency in the turnover. That's their 11th turnover, and they're 0 for 6 here, Drea, in the second quarter. It's so tough, Paul, and obviously I, I know that Coach Fortier and no one on the Gonzaga side will make any excuses, but what they're missing with the players and the sicknesses that they're dealing with. We haven't even talked about Leanne Worth not being able to play. She's a steadiness. She's consistent. She has a high basketball IQ. She makes good decisions, and she scores just under 10 points and gets six rebounds per game. And it's been that sort of story. Jen Worth, the reigning co-player of the year in the WCC, point blank, unable to knock that down. She's been making that shot in her sleep. And good news for BYU, Sarah Hampson, who suffered a left ankle injury, back on the floor already with three block shots. And she really set the tone early on defensively for BYU, now leading 19 to 8. Worth looking down inside and back-to-back uh, -back turnovers once again for Gonzaga. They need to get to the locker room and they got a while to go before that, try to regroup, being told that Jill Townsend, her illness has recurred, so we might not see her again so far in this game. Straight away by Gustin rattles in and out. That's what Gonzaga needs. One shot, get the rebound, take it to the other end. If you can get stops, now the focus and the execution on the offensive end to get good looks. Looking down inside to Worth, bump from behind, easy play to call. The foul is going to be called against Gustin. That is just the first team foul in the quarter so far for BYU. Also one team foul called against Gonzaga. I like what Gonzaga did on that offensive possession. Pull Hampson away from the basket. She's guarding Kempton, so Kempton went high. That way, Jen Worth could get a post down low. And one of the keys when we spoke to Lisa Fortier yesterday was what could they do when Hampson went to the sideline? The thing is, they just could not take advantage. Pass into Kempton, and once again, maybe not a shot blocked, but a shot changed. Hampson running the other way and noticeably limping on that left ankle. Three-pointer off the side of the iron, missed by Albiero. Nice crossover dribble, pass into the corner, good offense and block out. And the officials are conferring, and that's going to be Gonzaga basketball ruled off of Hampson. Coming up at the half, the teams to avoid in the NCAA tournament. That could be a pretty long list, and Charlie Collier, the All-American out of the University of Texas, has decided because she meets the age minimum. Isn't that right, Drea, in order to move yes. on? We talked about uh, that a lot with Ryan Howard, the outstanding player of the year in the SEC. She is not old enough in order to declare. That's all coming up on the Audi Halftime Report. To Worth, and that's going to be a blocking foul. Bang, bang play, but uh, I think the right one. Nice job stepping in. Tegan Graham, the six-foot graduate transfer out of Wellington, New Zealand originally. Went to Colgate in upstate New York. Dre, I know where it is and what it's about because that's where my daughter went. That free throw rattles down. Coming up Monday, we'll have exclusive, the live announcement of the 64-team NCAA Women's Championship field. Again, this year, we'll break down every team and every matchup in each region. 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app with a bonus hour of coverage on ESPNU. Once again, the women's tournament will be held in a bubble in the San Antonio area. The men's tournament will be held in Indianapolis.
This is what Gonzaga needs. Continuity on the offensive end. It's just too tough to finish on the inside. And tough is Jill Townsend. We to were told that she was ill in the arena, had to leave the bench area for a while, and here she is back out on the floor wearing number 32 in white, trying to help her teammates claw back into this game. Look, it's 19 to 10. It's not like it's completely out of hand at all. Gonzaga's Absolutely. gone through a really, really tough stretch, but it's not like BYU has blown the doors off like they did yesterday offensively, the 30-point win over USF. This could very well be the toughest half that Gonzaga has had, but to be in the game, to be down nine, regroup at halftime, they're still in this. Just need a couple of solid possessions, take better care of the ball. Hampson down inside has had a huge impact and on the held ball. Possession arrow will go to Gonzaga with exactly a minute left. I think the defense from Gonzaga has been solid. They're getting stops. They're getting rebounds, limiting BYU to one and done. It's the offensive end where things aren't as fluid. When you're playing with different lineups, though, it's tough. Another long shot, long rebound. Townsend, last year's West Coast Conference Player of the Year, goes and gets it. And Trong needs a bounce. Not there. Ball stolen away momentarily. Gonzaga retains possession. Foul is going to be called on the perimeter. One of the BYU defenders. <laughs> That was Paisley Harding paying no attention to that screen at all, just running right through it. But even that offensive possession, you're low. Players are playing low. They're jab step. They're attacking. They're getting a little more fluidity and attack on that offensive drive. Harding, who had 23 points and seven rebounds yesterday, for 15 of those points coming in the first half. 5'9", senior out of Everett, Washington. First team, all West Coast Conference for the second time. Three-pointer on the way and knocked down. It's a much-needed offense coming the way of Gonzaga. And they worked for that one, Paul. Multiple offensive rebounds, ball movement, knocked down the shot. O'Connor for Gonzaga able to give some offense and time winding down in the opening half, 19-13. And right at the buzzer, Shaley Gonzalez knocks that down. Might have been a long two. We'll see if they sort that out to give her a two or a three. Right now it's 22 to 13 at the halftime break. Yeah, that's clearly oh, a three-pointer, Oh, yeah, that looks good. Love the drift pass. Back-to-back -back plays, bang, bang, from beyond the arc. These two teams are competing. Beautiful drift pass for the three. Gonzalez leading the way with seven and for Gonzaga. They need Gonzaga, they need to get into the locker room and try to sort things out and maybe find some healthy bodies. Well, let's get to the Audi halftime report. Score here in Las Vegas, BYU 22, Gonzaga 13. Player of the year really stood out to me. I just love her game, the way she probes the defense. That's with her left hand. Love her floater. She uses that a lot in the paint. She made a few backdoor reads. She's getting denied. She's getting played hard. She uses it against Gonzaga. It goes backdoor. And then just reading the defense. You've got to cut to the corner on a baseline drive. She gets the drift pass, and she knocks it down. Very heads-up play. She was three for nine and just made great basketball decisions and scored the ball in that first half. Gonzalez again, uh, the co-player of the year with Jen Worth for Gonzaga. 18 points, five rebounds, four and a half assists. The four and a half assists. You'll appreciate this, Dre, as a former point guard. That's second best in the conference. She led the way with seven, including that buzzer beater at the end of the first 20 minutes. For Worth, it's been a struggle so far. Just one of nine from the floor. And Sarah Hampson, the shot blocker in the middle for BYU, has really changed things up. And good for Cougar fans to see her back in the game. And right on cue, Paisley Harding, the leading scorer yesterday in the semifinals, knocks down the opener for BYU. Her one dribble pull-up is probably my favorite way that she scores. I love a good hard dribble into her lift. And quickly at the other end, BYU is extending now to by far their largest lead, doubling up. On Gonzaga, just underway here in the second half. Andre, you got to give me some kind of formula for the Zags to try to creep back into the. There's a lifetime left. You know, there are no 13 point plays. What do they have to start emphasizing in each possession? 
I like the spacing, the ball movement, and the attack. If you can get downhill and before you get to the paint, have enough space. So that shot by Chong, she had enough space to get downhill, pick up some speed, and get into her shot. That was Kay Lin Trung wearing number 14, averages four points to go along with three assists. Step through, looked like a traveling violation, not called, and Lauren Gustin, a oh, little bit of an offensive explosion so far at the beginning of the second half compared to what we had in the first. Good spacing and ball movement, but it's also going side to side, Paul. There has to be a north-south attack. Exactly right, Dre. He took the words right out of my mouth. They're moving the ball, but nothing was going on. Worth was not able to get any position down inside, stepped out and missed the 17-footer. She's now one of 10. Off the front of the iron, offensive rebound taken and then bobbled away, and here comes Trung out of the backcourt for the Bulldogs. Three-pointer by O'Connor. She hit one in the first half, not there. Aileen Trung steps back, a couple of baskets and a much needed three for Gonzaga, 740 remaining in the third. Love the ability to knock down the three off the dribble. That is so tough to do. Kaylin Trung knocks it down. I like her aggression and looking to score. Sister comes away with a steal. Trung may be feeling it a little bit, looking for her sister on the trail. Steps into a three-pointer, not there, and nice rebound again taken by BYU's Gustin. Averages just under 13 rebounds per game. That's second best in the country. Best in the WCC. Harding with some room to get to the rim, not to the floor, and she'll shoot a couple of free throws, and the foul is going to be called on Kempton, number 33. It's a smart decision by... Paisley Harding to attack Gonzaga. They're obviously limited with their bench, limited with their minutes and their available players. So what do you do? Attack, try to draw some fouls, get some players in foul trouble. If BYU is not going to do anything, they're not going to take their foot off the gas. As soon as the 64 team field is announced Monday at 8 Eastern, sign up to play women's, the Women's Tournament Challenge on ESPN.com. Fill out your bracket for a chance to win 10,000 dollars in Amazon gift cards. Go to ESPN.com slash TC Women. That's about a Are month for you that? on Amazon. Is, isn't that about a yeah, month for you on Amazon, Dre? Probably. Yes, Not, probably. Yeah, it is. Ejim, nice offensive rebound and stick back for the freshman out of Canada. It's a 10-point game. You're just joining us. Half a dozen players for Gonzaga struck by stomach illness was very doubtful if they were going to be able to play, most notably Jill Townsend and Sierra Walker. They have both played a little bit so far in the opening half, and, and that's a nice play off of Ejim, and that'll be BYU basketball. You know, Paul, coming out in this second half, I really like the energy that we've seen from both the Trong sisters, pushing in transition, looking for their teammates, looking to attack. There's been a lift in energy from those two, and it's spreading to the rest of the team. Ejim didn't finish that layup, but I love the way she ran the floor. And Gonzaga putting on a little full court pressure to try to change the tempo of this game, maybe take a few seconds off the shot clock once BYU gets into the attacking zone. Townsend on the floor now, wearing number 32. Ball is deflected away, and Gonzaga will come with it. Can they get a point off turnovers? Jen Worth has been very, very quiet. Hampson on the sideline right now again for BYU. Townsend coming up well short. Just not herself after being stricken with illness over the last 12 to 14 hours. Nice pass, but off the side of the iron. Got to make that. Lauren Gustin will want to have that one back. Battle down inside, and that's going to be an offensive foul called on number three, Jen Worth. It's her second personal foul. Tegan Graham has been competing, and Jen Worth, she comes down. Look at the battle down low. 
physical, but you can't get your elbow that high for Jen Worth. Tegan Graham has been very solid so far in the tournament. 14 points yesterday in the blowout win over the Dons of USF, four of five from three-point range. And as soon as she got in the game this afternoon in Las Vegas for this championship, she immediately had an impact at both ends of the floor. She's wearing number 10 in the dark blue uniform. I like that it started with her defensive presence and defensive energy, and then the offense started flowing. And Lauren Gustin has had a few layups. She's got a focus on the inside. A few in the first half, a few in the second half that have gotten away from her down low. Boy, that is a break right now for Gonzaga with a couple of misses right at the front of the rim, as you mentioned by Gustin. That was a perfect dribble penetration by Shaley Gonzalez. Gave the ball up, but Gustin couldn't finish. Long two-pointer on the way, and as you mentioned, the energy from both Trung sisters, Kaylin and Kaylee. That's it. Kaylin with another three off the dribble. Keep taking them. That's another way that Gonzaga can get back in this game. It's hard to trade twos for threes. They can get themselves back in it, but it's tough when Paisley Harding is knocking down, moving backwards into her jump shots. That was a pretty good response by Harding, the 5'9 senior out of Everett, Washington. Her husband, Connor Harding, will be playing in the championship game tonight for BYU against, you guessed it, the number one team in the country and the undefeated Gonzaga Bulldog. That's at 6 o'clock Pacific time on ESPN. That's going to be a traveling violation on the perimeter. Kaylin Trong knocked down a three earlier, and Paisley Harding was not bothered by it at all. She responds with a little step back two of her own. The task is maybe even taller for BYU this time around. Oh, baby! A star is being born today. Champ Week continues, presented by SoFi tonight, the West Coast Conference Championship. On the men's side, Gonzaga undefeated. The number one team in the nation, the number one seed, obviously, will take on BYU, the same matchup as we're having on the women's side. Corey Kispert, Drew Tinney, and Jalen Suggs. Uh, Gonzaga currently the favorite by many, if not all. But again, it's, it's, it's one and out. So we shall see what happens in the men's NCAA tournament. But that championship game coming up tonight. 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ESPN. Back with Andrea Carter. I'm Paul Sunderland. And uh, somebody's taking a lid off the baskets. Maybe it was nice that the teams changed in. 32-23, it was a nine-point advantage at the break, but both teams have scored nicely here to start the third quarter. Nice play off the weak side once again by Trung. This was number 11, Kaylee, coming over for the deflection. Four seconds to shoot for BYU. Hampson still on the sideline, sprained her ankle quite seriously early in this game with 105 remaining in the opening quarter, but BYU did not miss a beat. She had already blocked three shots. That ball deflected out of bounds. 332 remaining in the quarter. There is Hampson. Shot clock reset to 20. Lob pass down inside and deflected out of bounds by Gustin. Like the defensive energy. Just just look at Townsend defending Harding at the top. Energy, she's not feeling well guarding one of the best scorers for BYU. Just love her effort and the toughness that she's bringing. Boy, how quick was that off the inbounds play. Nice jumper once again by Harding. That was Graham off the perimeter. Harding has 10. Gonzalez has nine. And Graham now with seven off the bench. A ball kicked. It'll be Gonzaga basketball trailing now by 11. Very low scoring like opening quarter. BYU led it, Andre, excuse me, 10 to 8, 22 13 at the halftime break. I like the seal by Jenworth down low. Look at the battle between her and Graham. Good attack by Ejim as well. The seal down low and the effort that Jenworth was giving on the seal is what kept Graham from being able to help on that drive. That was a really nice take by Yvonne Ejim. 
going to play some additional minutes today in this championship because of the extensive illness struck the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Gonzalez off the window, not there. Battle for the offensive rebound. And BYU will reset. I thought Paisley Harding was going to pull the trigger. She could take Heck that one. This. She could yeah. take it. He got the green light. Heck with a reset. Good pass over the top and blocked by Worth. Worth got to be careful. She's playing with two personal fouls right now. Shot clock being counted down. Harding, a nice look. Wow. You scramble, you play really good defense if you're the Bulldogs for 29 seconds, and then Paisley Harding buries one. She's just so unbothered, Paul. The shot clock's winding down. She catches the pass that's a little too high, just locks in and knocks it down. Both Trung sisters have gotten off nicely here in the third quarter, but Andrea, as we take a look, Back at this previous play, we've got to ask you how they're going, how Gonzaga is going to get Jen Worth going. Well, I, I got to take another look at this pat. Look, the skip pass, she catches it. Shot clock is at one, and Harding still knocks it down. Her composure on her jump shots is so smooth, so unbothered. But Jen Worth, you know, I still like what she's doing. I like her ceiling down low. She's demanding the basketball. Hampson is back give it on to that ball deflection. And score easy. And right now, Worth, the reigning co-player of the year in the conference, four points on one of ten shooting. Eleven to shoot. As the Bulldogs inbound. Trung from distance off the side of the iron. Nice rebound taken by Harding. Remember when we spoke with uh, Gonzaga head coach Lisa Fortier yesterday? She said, look, we're very much a system kind of team. Gonzalez misses that. It's not like we have one player. We just can't throw it to Worth and say, look, you go to work. We have to do it within the confines and the concepts of our team play and how we do things. Been pretty successful, 22-3 and three on the year. It's also hard, too, with the players on the floor. Nice shot, knocking it down. But it's tough, Paul, if you think about the players that are on the floor and the rotations that are a little bit different than normal, right? When Jen Worth is on the floor and Leanne Worth is on the floor with her, there's a little less attention that's given to Jen Worth because of what Leanne Worth can do, right? And so you just think about the players that they're missing, the rotations that they're playing with. A little more attention can be given to Jen Worth from the defense. Nice play by Trung after Hampson. Had corralled the rebound, tipped away, and it will give Gonzaga another chance to cut into this lead. Now back to nine. Shot clock and game clock separated by about three and a half seconds. Kaylin Trong, she's been pulling up for the three off the dribble. Looking for her sister on the curl. Nice looking play. Good rotation by Hampson, who forces the turnover. Boy, there was time. There was time left on the clock. That trigger was pulled uh, decidedly early, but a very rare mistake so far for Harding in this conference tournament. That will do it. Andrea Carter through three quarters. BYU, the number two seed, on top of Gonzaga, 36 to 27. So the Bulldogs have one last push, even though they are very shorthanded. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. There is the trophy to be handed out this afternoon and another one tonight on the men's side. Same two teams going at one another, Gonzaga and BYU, the number one and number two seeds. Gonzaga, again, the story with them shorthanded. The BYU taking advantage and Paisley Harding, Drea. Hottest player so far in Las Vegas on the women's side. I really just love that she never looks rushed. All of her shots, they're under control, they're composed. Look at that behind the back step backwards into her shot. She gets into her shot so quickly. It's the same release every time. Just a smooth performance, especially in the second half from Harding. Harding with 12 points, leading all scores. Four of seven from the floor. She has yet to connect from outside the arc. Four of four from the free throw line. Handful of rebounds and a couple of assists as well, leading the way for BYU. And once again, 
to recap, Gonzaga struck by illness. They're very shorthand in the players that have been able to come back and give it a try, like Jill Townsend, most notably Sierra Walker. You can tell that they have been affected. Leanne Worth has not played at all because of illness. Also a couple of staff members. Gonzaga's in the field. They are the number 16 overall ranked team in the country. Charlie Cream, our bracketologist on the women's side, has them as that ball rattles through for Ejim as a number five seed. Charlie, before the game began, we spoke with him briefly, and he said that BYU had the slimmest, the slimmest, the, no, he called it a sliver. I want to be accurate. I want to chart, I want to quote Charlie, a sliver of a chance if BYU did not win this game. But if they win, obviously they get the automatic berth, and on they go. Been Both teams shooting it. There we go. Yeah, That's it. Here's strong. Trung at the other end, has the ball blocked away by Shaley Gonzalez, doing it at both ends of the floor. That was a really big missed opportunity for Gon Gonzaga. Especially when their offense is having a tough time, you want to be able to score off your defense and capitalize on those plays. And almost a five point switch. Switch, Ejim able to come up with that. Yeah, that would have cut it to a six point advantage after Gonzaga has trailed by as many as 13. Driving baseline, reverse layup, comes up just a little bit short for Trunk. Hampson, the six foot seven shot blocking expert for BYU starting this fourth quarter on the sideline oh nice crossover dribble step back jumper no offensive rebound taken by Gustin and a foul is going to be called that uh, called before the shot we have to take Gonzalez another look again. at the blocked shot by Gonzalez look at that going around just a little tip on it makes the difference and that was a big defensive play from Kaylee Trong but I love the effort getting back, not giving up on the play from Gonzalez. That is a huge play, and Gonzalez just got her fingertip on that basketball, and then Trung, another opportunity, missed what was a tough reverse layup in traffic. Townsend with the steal. You talked about Sierra Walker not being as available as normal. She played so well yesterday. Knocked down three threes. That would also give Gonzaga space on the offensive end, but they're able to finish there. How about this inverting offensively? Instead of having Jenworth down on the block to battle against the size and strength, you put Ejim down inside, make Worth the passer. Nice adjustment by Lisa Fortier, the head coach in her seventh year for Gonzaga. And a great seal and strong turn and quick finish. And it makes sense. You know, Jen Worth is struggling down low. When she gets the ball at the top, there's just a little relaxation from Graham, and Ezram's able to get that seal hard. Look at this, 750 remaining, and it's a five-point game. And Ejim has been fabulous. Eight points, eight rebounds. Harding runs right through Chung and is called for the offensive foul. That'll go down as a turnover. That's turnover number 13 for BYU. Ejim has stepped up. Kaylin Trong has stepped up as well. Look at that. Take the hit straight to the chest and fall down. That is such a solid play. Sacrificing your body, bringing the ball to the floor. I said she had a lot of energy, especially in the second half. Solid, solid play. Hampson is on. Nice play down inside to Townsend, and then Hampson came over to shut the door on that. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Boy, they are doing a job defensively on Worth number three, kicking into the corner, and Ejim knocks it down again to beat the clock. Now in double figures with 10, and it's a three-point game. Step up when your name is called. When the other team, when you're, you may not be at the other team's focus, and that's when you capitalize. Big 
big possession for BYU into the corner to Gustin. Gonzalez back to Gustin. Or maybe got away with a travel, nothing called, laid it up and in. Look at the battle down low. Oh Gustin yeah, it's like physical. Going at it. it is. Gustin now with eight so far in this championship game. Worth trying to step through the double, now the triple. Loses the handle just over the end line. And with four seconds to shoot, it'll be Gonzaga basketball. Chenworth just attracts so much attention when she has the basketball. It's a testament to her talent and her skill level. Had three players on her. Townsend, step back, not there. And nice play by Worth. If you're not scoring, don't go do the little things. Offensive rebound. W. O'Connor, number 30 in white, cut off. Really good defense all game long, particularly by BYU in the first half. Both teams really playing hard. Ejim to beat the shot clock. That was a good job getting that shot off, and it creates another opportunity. Good read again by the freshman. And look at Abby O'Connor going up to get the rebound. Two players right next to her. She goes up and gets it. I like the effort from Gonzaga fighting back down players, you have to respect it. Good looking play, offensive rebound taken by Worth out to Trung after the miss by O'Connor. 5.20 remaining. The champion will get an automatic berth. Gonzaga's in the tournament no matter what. They've won this championship on eight occasions. BYU three times since joining the league back in 2011. Gonzalez with the steal. That is a really good timeout called by Jeff Judkins. He realized that Shaley Gonzalez had dribbled into a very precarious spot, and the head coach bails his team out. Five-point game, five minutes remaining. The Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship starts tomorrow in Kansas City. Baylor, the number one overall seed, and Kansas, look out for them. They've won seven out of eight. They're only lost in overtime to Texas. And speaking of the Longhorns, Number three seed taking on Texas Tech, the Red Raiders in the final four a couple of years ago. And what a first round match. Kate Cunningham, Oklahoma State against West Virginia. That is the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship starting tomorrow. Back with Andrea Carter. I am Paul Sunderland. And uh, we found ourselves a very interesting final five minutes. I love the way both teams have competed playing through injuries, playing through some illness. That foul is going to be called on Worth and really, really brave toughness by Sarah Hampson playing on a very, very gimpy left ankle, but working in there in the paint and she will earn BYU another possession. When we come back to Las Vegas, Gonzaga got down by as many as 13 in the third, and they have battled back, cut the lead to five in the fourth quarter, and it has been the play of Yvonne Ejum. She's got 10 points off the bench. She's attacked. She's had a defensive energy, just been relentless in her effort in this comeback. Very impressed. She averages six minutes per game coming into today. She's played 18, really stepped up when her name was called. And no question, eight rebounds, as you saw, an important block shot against Gonzalez. And who was going to proverbially step up in the absence of because of the illness to so many Gonzaga players, and some of them very, very importantly, Ann Worth, sadly unable to play the final game in the West Coast Conference. The twin sister out there, but Leanne unable to play due to the illness. Townsend has given it a go, as has Sierra Walker. Gonzalez turns the corner, working against Worth off the side of the iron. Four minutes and 10 seconds remaining. Trung, wow. Nice play on the held ball, but the possession arrow will stay with BYU. Look at this fight. Just look at the fight. Sneaking in there, getting up maybe a little hold on the left arm. Did you see the little, maybe the little hold and tap on the elbow? But I love the battle and I love the fight and physicality regardless. 
Yeah, the Trung sisters have really been key to Gonzaga getting back in this game in the second half. Remember, Gonzaga only scored 13 points in the entire first half. They scored 14 in the third quarter to get back in, or at least stay in contact. The energy that the Tron sisters, both of them, came out of halftime with, picked up pace, knocked down threes, played aggressive, and made some big plays. Shot clock winding down. Do you get a bounce? Wow, bounce for Shaley Gonzalez. Her ability to score at the front of the rim, over the front of the rim, is very solid. Gonzalez now with nine points, struggled a little bit from the floor. Three-pointer on the way and buried Eliza Hollingsworth, a six-foot-two redshirt freshman out of Australia, knocks down a big shot. Gonzaga still alive. The first round is already underway in the New York Life ACC tournament. Miami over Pittsburgh earlier. Notre Dame coming off a big win. Oh, takes on Wake Forest and Duke playing on day one. We'll see what happens with North Carolina, Louisville, those ACC powerhouses along with Syracuse, Virginia, as you can see, the number one seed. And Florida State as well, led by Leonard Hamilton. The ACC tournament coming your way on ESPN. Some full court pressure applied by Gonzaga. Three minutes and ten seconds remaining. Really got to hand it to the Bulldogs, as short-handed as they are. To be back within four, exactly three minutes remaining. So much fight. When I asked Coach Fortier how she would describe her team, the first word she said was resilient, and they've showed it. Shot clock winding down again. Gonzalez to beat the clock. No, that's going to be a shot clock violation. Wave that one away. Lauren Gustin threw that ball up left-handed, but it was just a little bit late. So a really good defensive stand right now by Gonzaga. It's the scrambles and the energy and the closeouts, but you keep your feet chopping, getting your hand on the ball, sticking with the play, the whole possession. I wish we had time to run it back because the defensive energy has kept Gonzaga in this game when they've struggled so much on offense. They have had some solid defensive possessions. Yeah, I like extending really the full court pressure as well, just to limit that shot clock. Yeah, that last uh, possession, as you mentioned, some really good rotations defensively, also falling to the level of the ball. Remember, Gonzaga ranked number 16 in the country, a number five seed, Ejim, trying to take it. Oh, she scores again. She has been the best bulldog of all so far today in Las Vegas. They don't have a chance without her performance. From the BYU bench, I heard drive. I heard them calling it, and she's still able to get that left-handed layup. Remember what Charlie Cream told us. BYU only a sliver, a sliver of a chance to get into the NCAA tournament unless they win this game today and obviously qualify as the automatic. BYU be could a be a factor game. now with three team fouls. That ball deflected out of bounds. Ejim doing it at both ends of the floor. Two minutes remaining and 11 to shoot. Again, with the activity and energy on defense, even just putting your hand out to get a deflection, it slows down the rhythm of BYU and the continuity of their offense. Gonzalez going away from the ball screen. Kicks it back once again to Gustin and off the turnover. Look at this, a chance for Gonzaga to either tie or take the lead. Ejim, crossover dribble, almost lost the handle, steps back, and we'll get to the free throw line. I love the decision to go at Graham because she's in foul trouble. If that's on Graham, which I feel like it is, that's her fifth foul. Graham has fouled out. Haven't seen much of Sarah Hampson so far in the second half. Remember, with a minute five remaining, injured her left ankle, did try to come back on, but was laboring noticeably trying to get up and down the floor. So Graham out of uh, Wellington, New Zealand, the transfer from Colgate, will head to the sideline, fouled out seven points on three of five shooting. 
Ejim. Good on the first free throw. Only a 59% free throw shooter. Rattles in and out. If she made the second, I was going to say she looked like John Stockton at the line. <laughs> can't say enough about Ejim's play. She played seven minutes against Santa Clara. She was three for three in that seven minutes. So you like her energy and you like what she brings with the time that she has. But man, has she stepped up big today. The officials are reviewing, obviously, a very, very big call to see who this ball went off of. Hampson is back in the game. The play from behind by Worth, that's going to be a tough one. Huge call here. What do you think, Andrea? Listen, there's a reason I'm on this end of things. I feel yeah, like but you used to be on that end of things. <laughs> I know, I know. But I feel like it's hard because Hampson's hand is on the inside. So even if Worth is pushing Hampson's hand down, is it Hampson's hand that touches the ball last? I think it is. It looked like it went off of BYU last. Clearly there was some contact from behind, but no foul was called on Worth. Another look. So Hampson's hand on the inside, and it's almost like Worth just goes right on top of Hampson. Yeah, that's really tight. That's really tight. I'm not sure that there was a call made when the play happened live. I think that they immediately decided that they were going to review it. Now, let's get inside the B B uh, BYU huddle. They've gone really, really cold at the offense you think they're feeling the pressure of the situation because at one time they led by as many as 13. i think so anytime a team starts to make a comeback especially when you had a lead as big as 13 and you see it go away it, i mean it happened i've had had it happen to me before and you just get a little bit tighter because every basket every possession is important it almost feels like you need to make this next basket and it adds that pressure If my math is correct, and that's always an open question, Gonzaga has outscored BYU 12 to four so far here in the fourth quarter. Remember Andrea, we were talking earlier, this tournament has not always been so kind to Gonzaga. Even though they've won this, won this championship eight times, remember a couple of years ago, Jill Townsend broke her leg here. Now they have the gastroenteritis. Uh, Lisa Fortier's family and she lost her brother, suffered a terrible, terrible personal loss. I mean, this has not always been the best tournament for Gonzaga as much success through the decades as they have had winning eight WCC championships. No, you know, it's been so tough. And last season, they go out on that last second shot. They lose a one-point game. So the past couple of years, between injuries and personal loss, it, it's been tough for Gonzaga. And I think that's why you see the heart and the effort that they are putting forth today in this game. Trung got to go. Passed it one more time to O'Connor. Shot clock winding down. Got it up on the rim and a rebound taken in traffic by Lauren Gustin. It's a nice job by BYU at getting a stop when they need it. When it means the most, are you able to get a stop on the defensive end? Inside of a minute. Gonzaga's done a good job on Gonzalez. Shot clock winding down and a foul is going to be called. That is, uh, that is on Jen Worth, her fourth personal foul. Could be big if you think about overtime. And that is the third team foul on Gonzaga. Nice backdoor cut. What a huge play on the out of bounds by Shaley Gonzalez to give BYU the three point advantage. 45.8 remaining. That was such a heads up play. And I love the emotion right there in that huddle. Look at the quick read and pass right where it needs to be from Harding to Gonzalez. And she finishes the layup. Look right here. This, that's it right there. That is what a tournament championship on the line feels like and looks like. I love it. Trung, I love the energy. Trung turned her head, Andrea, turned her head for just a moment. And then Paisley Harding with a magnificent read to find her teammate Shaley Gonzalez. 
That's all it takes. They say basketball is a game of inches. It can be a game of seconds at times. If you're a second late, it's a backdoor. If you're a second late, the pass is where it needs to be. That's the best thing about this game. That's what makes it so fun. Forty-two to thirty-nine. Inside of forty-five seconds remaining. Foul on the perimeter. That looked like a good legal screen, and running right through it, the BYU defender Maria Albiero. This is great for Gonzaga because it's almost yeah, like yeah, that's a bad foul. Yeah, that's a bad foul. They they score here, and even if BYU uses the full shot clock. Gonzaga is still going to have a chance to score at the end. Worth three for four so far in the afternoon from the free throw line. Beautiful looking stroke, a 72 percenter on the year. And once again, it's a one possession game. Timeout called by BYU. Jeff Judkins, the 2021 WCC Conference Coach of the Year for the fifth time, been to the Sweet 16 a couple of times, and his team really up against it and Gonzaga shorthanded because of the illness that we've talked about half a dozen players stricken yesterday along with some team staff and a, an assistant coach but it's up to BYU got off to a good start at least through the first three quarters to take advantage of this golden opportunity and according to Charlie Cream turn a sliver into half a pie and get in it's so tough I, I've loved the fight from both teams you know for BYU it's been Paisley Harding and Shaley Gonzalez who have really stepped up kind of their anchors they've come and they've played Hampson has played through an injury to her ankle and really just the entire Gonzaga team pulling together when they're so limited been very impressed by both sides once again Gonzaga currently a number five seed according to Charlie Cream BYU probably needs to win this will be decided in less than 30 seconds one point game and Gonzaga has fouls to give timeout called again you can't take them with you back to Provo Utah so if your possession is in trouble that's a good coaching move by Jeff Judkins who played for four different NBA teams including the Celtics the Blazers the Jazz and the Pistons played at the University of Utah with one Tom Chambers who had a pretty good NBA career. Danny Vrain's there as well. The golden age of Utes basketball, although it's pretty good these days as well. And what you can't do if you're BYU here is, is play on your heels and be backwards because if you give Gonzaga an opportunity to get a steal, you've got to play in attack mode. You still want to be under control, but you've got to play forward. You can't play backwards or side to side. Timeouts remaining, fouls to give. The possession arrow would go to Gonzaga. 24 seconds remaining, 14 to shoot. Look at the energy by Trong at the top. No surprise, Gonzalez with it. The two co-players of the year going one-on-one, -on -one, Harding down the lane, off the side of the board. Now what a good rebound in traffic. And immediately a timeout is called. Wow. 8.5 seconds remaining. Worth did not put the ball on the floor, so now Gonzaga can advance the ball to midcourt. And you have to give credit to Townsend as well at playing this drive and not fouling Harden. Look, sliding, don't foul. And look at the energy from Jen Worth coming in. She has had such a tough day. One for 10 from the field, but still eight rebounds, and her energy and her leadership has not let up one bit despite her offensive struggles. All right, where do you go offensively, given Worth, your leading scorer on the floor? Townsend is the leading scorer fractionally, but she's under the weather. The Trung sisters have been doing a nice job. But where is Yvonne Ejim? That's where I would go. <laughs> I, I'm thinking Ejim as well. She has had so much success at being able to drive and attack, and if anything, draw fouls and get to the free throw e line. Exactly. Interesting to see if BYU put Sarah Hampson back on the floor for this final possession as a rim protector. Yeah, I would Such isolate Ejim at the elbow and let her just, you know, Like they shake, have before. Jab. They've yeah, done yeah. that. Take it off the dribble, and Hampson will be on the floor. 
two very, very good, experienced coaches. She's such a game changer. Gonzaga has pulled her away from the basket a couple of times. Gonzaga does have one timeout remaining if they have to, they're easy to get it in. Trump turns the corner in traffic, lays it up, not there. Egypt with the rebound. And uh, on the held ball, the possession arrow will go to Gonzaga. Great effort by Egypt. Timeout called by the Bulldogs, and the officials might look at this one. See what happens as far as the time is concerned. Right now at point six, so you do have time for You've catch and time. shoot. But they might they might put they might put a few tents back on. Ejim had the offensive rebound, but just lost her footing and couldn't get a shot back up at the rim. told the officials did not look at the clock so they're confident that the timing is right so it will be 0.6 remaining with a win BYU guarantees them obviously a spot as the automatic qualifier as the WCC top conference tournament champions cuts and screens hard cuts solid screens so important with baseline out of bounds Townsend oh she got it They'll look at it. Of course, they'll look at it. Off the inbounds play, Jill Townsend. One of half a dozen players who were stricken ill. Let's take another look. Is it out of her hand? Wow, that is really close. They're going to look at this one for a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's out of her hands. That's, that's out, of, out her hand. of her hands. Yeah. What yeah. a play. Over the outstretched arms of Hampson, down low, Jill Townsend. Wow. Last year's West Coast Conference Player of the Year. The lift, the elevation, wow. the focus. Wow. And the heartbreak for BYU, the absolute heartbreak. Now they're going to have to wait. The basket is officially good. Jill Townsend scores it with 0.6 seconds remaining. And Gonzaga wins it 43 to 42. Incredible, incredible toughness, togetherness. They just never wow. lost hope after they trailed by as many as 13 with eight minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the third. Wow, what a finish. And it's so emotional, and it should be. We talked about what's happened to Gonzaga the last couple of years in this very tournament. They lost on a last-second shot last year. They win on a last-second shot this year. Let's take a look at it once again. The winning shot by Jill Townsend, the 5'11 senior out of Okanogan, Washington. You want to talk about fearless and tough and gritty. Ice in her veins, she knocks it down. No hesitation. Save your energy, girl. You've been sick for the last 18 hours. Save your energy. No, don't save it. You've got time. You've got time. The NCAA tournament isn't for a couple of weeks. Use it. Sleep on the wow. plane. Wow, what a play. What a game and what a play. You have to give credit to BYU. They played yep. so hard. Hampson played through the ankle injury. Gonzalez played well. Harding played so well. But Gonzaga, they kept in it. They kept at it. They win the championship, Andrea, for the ninth time. And maybe this was the most unlikely because after being struck by illness. But don't tell that to a Bulldog or Jill Townsend. The final score once again, Gonzaga wins the championship 43-42. Now BYU heartbroken. We'll have to wait and see what their fate is.